If you are anything like me, then you have ridden countless of miles out on the road with nothing other than a pump, spare tubes and a repair kit with you and probably never had any mechanical issues of note. Does that sound familiar? Well, perhaps not entirely because again, if you're anything like me, then you will have done a lot of your training out in the roads on a TT bike just like this one. And there can be some specific problems that can crop up out there on the roads. So today I am going to run through a few of those plus highlight some other common roadside mistakes so that in the hope you will avoid making them too. So tip number one, I'm gonna talk about a slipped seat post. Now of all these points, they are frustrating in general, but this one can really feel like it's gonna ruin a ride. Now believe me, having spent many years cycling in Scotland, I've had my fair share of this issue. You're riding along quite happily and all of a sudden there's an unexpected pothole or an extended rough section of road and before you know it, your seat post has slipped and even if it's only a few millimeters, it can really start to bug you. But in the worst case scenario, it can almost feel like your knees are up around your ears almost. So how can you avoid this? Well, firstly you need to start with the most simple and that is checking that your seat post bolts or clamp system is nice and tight. Now in this bike here we've got one bolt here and then I've got another one on the other side of the frame. On other frames they can be behind the seat post and sometimes you even see them with a mechanism from underneath as well. Just be sure to make that as done up to the recommended torque for your frame. If there's more than one bolt do both bolts up evenly on the same side you don't want to have one more tight than the other. Now another thing that you can also do is grease um, the inside of your frame and your seat post is something like this which is a, a grease paste, a carbon grease paste should I say. Just a very thin layer of it on the inside of the frame can just make sure that the carbon bonds a little better to each other. And a final thing that you can do for making sure that you're aware that your seat post is slipping, because sometimes you're not, is stick some electrical tape on here like I've done just so that you can see if it starts to slip that tape will bunch up. So issue number two is electronic gear failure. Now many of us these days are very fortunate to have electronic shifting on our bikes and me as you can see included. And I would suggest that if I had to go back to mechanical gears on my TT bike at least, I would really struggle. I think this stuff is game changing. But that is of course if it works and there is nothing worse than being stuck out in the middle of your long bike ride at the weekend with no gears because your batteries have run out. It is extremely frustrating. I have been there, believe me. Now what tends to happen with electronic systems is the front derailleur will stop working straight away. So that would leave you in the small chain ring like I am here. And then hopefully you'll have enough battery life left for the rear derailleur to keep working and that'll get you home. But if that fails too, then you're left in whichever gear you have been in when the gears stop working. And for that, for me in this instance, you would see I'm stuck in fairly difficult gear, which wouldn't be great if I was on a hilly ride. Now the thing is with these gears, the batteries tend to last for a very long time. And that's why it can be very easy for us to forget to charge them up because we just don't think we need to charge up our gears. So the best thing to do is charge them up overnight before any long ride that you've got and then you know that everything is gonna be working fine. But if you want to double check, you can do that too. And on most bikes, what you do is double press the shifters on the um, base bar and hold those down simultaneously. And then on this bike, what would happen is my junction box, which is here hidden in my storage box, would have a little flashing light. If the battery is perfectly fine, then that would be solid green. If it's half full, 50%, then I have a flashing green. If it's starting to run out at 25% full, I would get a flashing red. And if I have almost no battery left, then I would have a full solid red line there. So issue number three is a loose handlebar or cockpit. Now, as I talked about before, the slipped seat post, this is something that can be exposed really easily on rough or pothole roads as well. But unlike the slipped seat post, this can actually be a very dangerous problem and can cause accidents. So it is something that we should be very mindful of when we're maintaining our bikes. So what should we be looking out for? Well, first of all, depending on the design of your bike and your cockpit, of course, is see how your stem and your handlebars are connected together. Well, on this bike here, I've just got a standard stem with a four bolt faceplate here. So I'd make sure that all four of those bolts are nicely evened up and tightened properly. Recommended torque, of course, like we talked about in the seat post. So make sure that's done up properly. And then of course, you've got your aero bar extensions as well, because you could be riding along in the TT position, hit a pothole and these could come loose and that is very dangerous. So you need to make sure that these bolts here are nice and tight as well, so that that isn't gonna be a problem. Now, of course, out in the road, all these things can be easily solved if you've got an Allen key with you. So carry them with you at all times and make sure that things can be snugged up. 
Now, punctures are inevitable. Whether you're on a road bike or on a TT bike like this one, they're part and parcel of going out on a ride. But you can mitigate against them by doing general maintenance checks, looking at the wear and tear in your tires and replacing them as often as you might need to. But the simplest thing to do is actually just to be prepared for when they might happen out on the road, and that is to carry your spares with you. Now, ideally one, but probably two tubes is a good idea in case of a double puncture. Some tire levers, a mini pump, and you can even carry with your CO2 adapter for a nice and quick inflation as well. But the best thing to do is practice before you get out on the ride and have to rely on needing to use them and know how to use it all before it happens. Right, so my fifth and final roadside mechanical involves tubes and specifically the valve lengths on our tubes because we can go out on our bike and think that we're prepared to fix a puncture should we get one, but I think often as triathletes, we forget that we're riding along oftentimes on our nice deep rim carbon wheels. And that means that we need to have right tubes to go with the rims. Now, believe me, I have been here too, I'm afraid, and you've gotten a puncture using your deep rim carbon wheels, delved into your spare pouch and realized that the valves that you've got are not long enough. So you see, what I've got here is a roughly 50 mil depth rim, and this valve would possibly be long enough, but I'm not sure if the valve would poke through enough. So what I've got to counter that is some valve extenders, because we can then add these onto the end of our valves, and that means that regardless of the depth of the rim, whether they're this deep or even deeper perhaps, you're gonna be able to fix your puncture and get home and not have to stick your thumb out. Now this is just a selection of some of the issues that we can face as triathletes when we're out on the road, but hopefully I've flagged up some of the mechanical issues that you might now be able to prepare for and avoid making the same mistakes. But of course, if you've come up with some other issues out on the road, I don't know, like rubbing brakes or maybe even a broken chain, please let me know down there in the comments below. I'd like to hear about those. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, so please hit that thumb up like button and find the globe wherever it is on screen so you can get all the other content that we have on GTN. And talking about other videos, I have just done a video about this bike explaining everything in details, which you can find here.